traps. Hello and welcome to Max Difficulty Gaming. I'm Didine77, thank you for joining me, and let's play some Galactic Civilizations 3, the beta. This game is currently in its beta 5 incarnation, version 0.81. For those of you new to the Galactic Civilization franchise, this game is a 4x strategy game similar to Civilization 5 or Beyond Earth, but set in outer space rather than on a single planet. Please check out my introduction video to the game where I go over the basics. There will be a link to it below. In the introduction, I also go further into depth about new changes from um, Galactic Civilizations 2 and the Dreadlords expansion to this game. So even Galsa veterans should check it out. I'm going to continue this let's play assuming you guys already know the basics so I won't have to waste time describing every single thing I do. Now the beta 5 release is called Custom Factions and as you may have guessed adds faction and race creation into the game. So as you can see here you can customize your portraits, your f person, your background, names, descriptions, race, logos, details, and most importantly for the game, the traits and special abilities that every race has. Every race gets two special abilities. And there's also appearance, of course, for your ships, and the th basically the theme for your ships. And this is the Terran theme, pretty cool. And um, this would be the basically ideology, your basic starting tech, which costs a little, and um, characteristic traits, which deals with um, for basically when the AI plays your race, or you can add a custom race into the game that the AI plays. So the game also adds in the beta 5 patch the Iconian Refuge and the Thalen Contingency which I believe are the two last races to be added to the game and there will be no more and there's also minor factions now too. So in this let's play I'm going to be playing as the Iconian Refuge with the new world New Iconia and the leader Iso the Wise. The special abilities are Starfaring, all star bases get the first module free and all ships are immune to nebula effects. So nebulas are the things that slow down movement and block vision slash sensor range. And all the star bases, so that could be very useful for um, getting star bases up because you don't have to spend an extra constructor to build an extra module. They're also paranoid, so they get free drones to defend planets, shipyards, and star bases. So this could mean one of two things, you could go militaristic and basically spend your whole fleet into attack mode and you don't have to worry as much about defense or you could just go completely influence economic, techno technological where you don't have to build a fleet because you get free drones. Their race traits are fertile which lets you grow your population faster, handy, lowers maintenance, farmers which lets your population grow bigger and they're also craven though which makes them terrible for planetary invasions against planetary invasions they are accurate and they're organized some pretty basic traits so let's get this started um so the game has basically added a few key things which are um, custom factions, the minor races. Uh, I love the minor races from Galactic Civilizations 2, like the, the evil squirrels slash gerbils, the snazzy. And they every single race also has um, race abilities, which I forgot to show you guys. So humans have engineers, colonizers, zealots. So every every single race is a lot more um, unique now, which is great. And you can see here, I'm going to set everything as default, huge loose clusters, because tight clusters actually make for pretty boring gameplay, you're too separated from all your neighbors, and loose clusters, basically, I, I like loose clusters most. I'm going to set everything as default, all victories on, um, game pacing normal, you can also change the game pacing in this patch, and the research rate. And of course, since this, this is uh, max difficulty gaming, I'm going to set the difficulty level to suicidal. 
galactic events I'm going to set as abundant because I want to see all the galactic events and the newly added minor races I'm going to set as abundant because I want to see as many of them as possible and of course all my neighbors are set to godlike and I have all seven of the base base um the default races in here I haven't created any of my own yet maybe later so let's start so the biggest change in my mind of this patch is the overflow mechanic before you used to not be able to you used to have to micromanage each planet and your technology perfectly so to max so as to maximize efficiency because any overflow meaning say a building costs 30 manufacturing and you put 40 manufacturing into it 10 would be completely wasted the game would not save it and overflow it into the next production until now so basically now you don't have to basically micromanage anymore and your technology and production both automatically overflow into the next turn which makes everything so much easier and the gameplay a lot quicker a lot less of the micromanaging a lot more strategic decisions just like um uh, all the other 4x strategy games like civilization so really thankful that they've added uh, the overflow which they they pretty much promised since beta 1 but better late than never and I will actually link the full patch notes in the description below because there's a lot of other goodies that I probably won't notice or go into depth for and as the Iconians, I plan to have a technological or maybe conquest, but probably technological victory. Maybe influence because I have such good population growth or economic victory. So the Iconian legacy, the Iconian refuge. The Iconians are the oldest of the young races, when servants to the precursors. Creators to the Yor, they were almost wiped out when their creations were given sentience by the Dreadlords. Only a few Iconians survived, hiding in a distant colony. Exceedingly cautious and not without cause, Iconians have a strong sense of fatalism. That said, they have never given up reclaiming their ancestral home, though their cautious nature has prevented them from ever pursuing this dream, until perhaps now. So that's, that's the background lore, and their strengths are overcautious, even paranoid as a result of living in hiding for generations. That said, living with limited resources has made them excellent farmers and repairers, and surprisingly accurate shots. Their entire colony built around minimizing waste. And the harsh population controls they live under have only enhanced their understanding of fertility. Okay. Okay, let's see where our planet is in the galaxy. We are sort of in the center. Oh, no, not really. Towards the left. The left quadrant. Okay, so I'm going to probably be expanding towards the um, edge of the map. So, you know, one less front to fight on in case I get into the war. And of course, New Iconia. Looks nice. Looks kind of like Earth. The big vein and of course in your starting system of Iconis you get one sub habitable planet barely habitable planet of sanctum class 4 I'm not gonna be populating that until way later because hopefully there will be a lot better lush planets around in the nearby solar system let's see our starting position um, so as I explained in my introduction video the bonus to adjacent improvements is a really big deal and sadly even though our colony capital gives bonus adjacent to adjacent improvements for pretty much every type of improvement it is not surrounded by any tiles so that kind of sucks but we do have two bonuses so we have one ancient ruins which gives tourism and research and one mineral rich which gives research and wealth we also have Oh, there doesn't seem to be a, 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 a profile for this, but it is actually a trade resource. Is this supposed to not show up? Maybe they just haven't 
uh, uplo uploaded the asset into the game yet. This is still a beta, of course. So I'm assuming it's supposed to be a fruit. <laughs> it's supposed to look like a fruit, but it gives plus 5% to my uh, growth, which is, I guess, okay, because I already have plus 5. I'm plus 10 from my fertile trait because of my race. Let's first change everything to research and social production. I do this because the Iconians do not start with interstellar travel. So all my ships move at basically one block a minute. If you look at my scout ship, it has two moves. My survey ship has three and my colony ship has three, which is really slow and an extremely disadvantage for basically a colony rush towards the surrounding planets, solar systems, star systems. So basically I'm gonna research um, interstellar as fast as possible that will take four turns and I will most likely unanchor my shipyard and start moving it towards the nearby star systems so hopefully there will be habitable planets and I will have oh, fingers crossed like three to four planets including Sanctum and New Iconia to fund feed production into this star shipyard so I go into depth about this in my introduction video where I explain how and why um, I feel like this system is better with the new shipyards in space rather than in on planets because oh there's a research relic here that's pretty cool okay um, and there's an anomaly I'm actually gonna re I'm actually gonna go um, find that real fast because might give me some boost to my research or find me a new scout ship which will be really useful I'll send my scout ship this way and basically I'm gonna have to start on some factories first too so I usually buy factories but for this I'm actually gonna buy a research laboratory for my first turn um, this is because this way for my research laboratory I can get the plus two bonus which comes with this mineral rich tile and research interstellar travel even faster so right now my technology I'm getting 19 tech per turn which is great and it's gonna be even higher after I finish this research laboratory but as soon as I build that after that I'm gonna build three factories beside each other so they get the bonus adjacency but uh, adjacent bonus to adjacent improvements plus one to manufacturing on all three and I will ramp up production on my main planet at ASAP because um, obviously I can't spend gold every single turn buying units I mean units or uh, improvements so I think this new shipyard as I was saying before I think this new shipyard is great because um, before when you used to populate uh, planets like Sanctum, which only have four tiles because it's a class 4 planet, it sucked a lot because you would have to waste one of those tiles on a shipyard if you wanted to produce anything on the planet or use the manufacturing on the planet to build anything in space. But this way, um, all you have to do is build a shipyard in space from one of your production planets like New Iconia and then and then you would be totally fine for the rest of it because you would not have to waste the tile space on any of your planets. It's it's more of a it's like a unit production from your planet. And you could with one shipyard you can get the production from three, four, whatever amount of planets that you wouldn't have to waste tiles on. And that would be great. So I'm researching this uh oh. So this site is protected by pirates. And um, you always want to engage pirates with your survey ship to start with because it's going to be strong enough. And they added this uh, the battle viewer in patch beta four. Okay, so let's check it out. Um, let's change to free camera. Oh, I can't. I don't know what's going on. Let's change to cinematic. There we go. So three scout pirate ships got nothing on me. I got giant hind cannon. I have all three types of um, weapons on this ship and no problem. So these are what Iconian ships look like. Uh oh, it's on fire. These are what Iconian ships look like. They have like, their styles are wings and tubes. 
basically. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but I lost not many, not much HP, 24 HP, not much at all, and I've destroyed this fleet. So my survey ship cautiously approaches the mysterious object, all sensors set to maximal gain. A secret of the universe, the first of many is about to reveal itself to you. So wow, that's really cool. So a powerful ship drifts, clearly da battle damage beyond repair. Its advanced drive systems, however, are remar remarkably well preserved. A few modifications to its more exotic components later, and your own drives are screaming along well beyond their factory specifications. So this is perfect. Wow, my survey ship has plus five movement right now. Five moves, and my scout ship has still two. But my survey ship can explore pretty much all these star systems in like four turns which would be amazing and I, I, basically the point of it is to explore for habitable planets and really lush like class 13 class 14 special planets so hopefully this is musteria and musteria one is sadly a dead void husk of a planet and hopefully there will be some habitable planets there same with Gorse, the red giant, some asteroid fields, hopefully once again I can also find some haploid planets in that planet. The best case scenario is of course there's a haploid planet in one of my, one of the nearest star systems to me. So I'm done f researching interstellar travel, perfect, and as you can see, um, it doesn't graphically display but the research will carry on over into the next research. So. Th there was probably some wasted research that would be wasted in previous patches, but now would carry on to whatever I research next, which will probably be industrialization. Even at the incredible speeds we can travel at now, if we want to journey anywhere beyond the closest stars, significant improvements need to be made. So a Xeno industrialization to get my Xeno factories and etc. up. But at this point, I don't really need it, so I'm going to change everything to production, factory production. And I'm gonna actually buy a factory too. So this way I can get all three factories up really quickly and I can build more research laboratories um, with purely the production for my planet rather than buying. And what is this planet? This star system is Yernussen. Yernussen has no planets, it seems. Um, planets can come within three tiles of the star. So there might be a habitable planet here, but extremely unlikely. Okay, so there's more resources here, but there are no habitable planets, sadly. Neither for Mosteria. So this actually is pretty crappy because that means that there are no habitable planets within range of my shipyard and my home system. Because my shipyard has to be within six tiles of a planet before production, the manufacturing that's fed to it, um, gets diminishing returns. So basically planets have to be within 12 tiles of each other for me to make a manufacturing hub be of between planets which sucks I'm gonna just send my shipyard up here for now and um, I'm gonna actually design a new colony ship because the default colony ships they give are um, well first of all they look pretty crappy I'm gonna be honest <laughs> and also they only have very slow move, movement speed. Um, they don't come with hyperdrives at all, and they only come with life support. And basically, the life support lets you move further on beyond your influence borders, but does not help at all in reaching the colonies faster. So, usually I build a new colony ship. I think I'm gonna create a new design for the new colony ship, or the basis to my colony ships from now on in the fashion of the Iconians. And I'm probably gonna speed this part up. I love the ship designing part of the game, but you may not, so I'm gonna speed this part up real fast and come back to you guys later.
Okay, so I sped it up and here is my ship. I tried to keep the theme of the Iconians alive, which are a bunch of tubes, a bunch of tube wheels, very s special to the Iconians, as you can see here. Um, this is going to be the colony ship. There's one colony module and one hyperdrive that I put on it, hyperdrive plus. Um, no idea what this is, it just looked cool. And I also added a bunch of wings on it to keep in the theme of the Iconians. Um, scientifically speaking, I can't find any excuse as to why there, anyone would put wings on a ship. Um, possibly their iconography, religious iconography, they're a pretty old race. Or maybe it's just heat diffusion for the engines. I'm, I'm going to go with that because I put all the wings on the engines and they're just, uh, they're just heat dissipators. That's what they are. Perfect. And it looks alien enough that I won't get bored with it. Not too human, hopefully. And I call it Colonial I-1. And I'm probably not gonna... I usually buy my first colony ship as soon as I find a really juicy planet to colonize. As of yet, there are none, sadly. So let's end our turn. So things aren't going great right now because I haven't found any habitable planets as of yet. I can't wait to find one because oh, there's an anomaly. I should have I should have went for that. That's why you move your ships a lot more slowly. Fear that that is the fire. I hope there's a habitable planet there because I'm really running out of, out of star systems. Things aren't great. Come on. Come on. One star system. That's all I'm asking. One. Oh, that's. Okay, so this is um, this is a crappy <laughs> anomaly to explore because it only gives credits. That's basically the worst thing you can you can find. It would be a shame if the. We let the valuable goods inside to go to waste. So this is amazing though. Mwara 1. Lush class 14 planet. With low gravity. So it has so a lot of planets in um, Galactic Civilizations 3 have bonuses to it. And this one, because it's low gravity, gives plus 25 to total manufacturing and plus 25 to tourism in income. And it's surrounded by asteroids, so it's going to get a lot of production boost later on in the game. That's amazing. Okay, um, well, this is... Sadly, it is way beyond 12 tiles to my, uh, to my shipyard. But I am going to actually anchor it and buy a ship right now. So I'm going to buy Colonial 1. Costs a thousand gold around. Um, I have enough to buy two, and basically I bought it because, and I, bought, I made the ship fast because, um, in this game, unlike in previous games, everything is based off the population. So all improvements in buildings only give percentage bonuses. Your base bonus. So for example, here your raw manufacturing comes purely from your population, and your basic factories give plus twenty five percentage bonuses. So the faster I get my population from useless space so whenever your population is on a colony ship it is completely useless and it is only useful when it is your population is on a planet so the turns while your uh, population is on a ship are basically wasted production but wasted research wasted economy so the faster basically the faster your ship can get to another planet and uh, colonize it the faster those three population in your ship can get to work so I'm gonna max out the population because I don't um, you should always max it out from your uh, main planet because oh shoot okay so in this case we have a problem where because I didn't put any life support onto my colonial ship it has the problem of not being able to go far enough into space to reach the planet so I'm gonna immediately send back my other ship and uh hopefully there'll be another star system i want to send the default ship they gave us because it has farther range but slower movement speed oh i should have thought of that i should have counted out the tiles that was 
That was dumb of me, to say the least. But it's okay. These things happen. Wolf Haven <laughs> apparently is the name of a star system and a star, but it is dead. Oh, what is this? Cleef. And it has negative 25% growth plus but plus 50% total manufacturing because it has an active core. But it's only class 7, so I don't really want to colonize a class 7 planet yet because there should be a bunch of class 10 and above free, like MWAR 1. Um, zero industrialization is going to take a while. I'm still building my basic factories, which is great. I'm actually going to build research factories, besi laboratories beside this one to give each other the adjacency bonus and also to this one while building more factories. So let's move up the factories. Perfect. Oh, whoops. Little basic factories. Done. Okay, so that's a, actually a really big problem that there aren't habitable planets near my star system, but um, I'll make do. Can't be. It'll get better, hopefully. And I'm actually going to send this ship here because this colonial ship will explore the star system while passing by, so there's no need to wait, waste turns using this one. Um, I actually want to colonize a planet as soon as possible so I can show you guys ideology in this game which I have not been able to show you guys yet. A manufacturing relic. So there's a lot of relics near us, which is good because we get a free um, constructor module. Not a free constructor module, a free starbase module when we build a constructor. Oh, so Wolfhaven is completely dead, sadly. Once again, more dead planets. There's so many asteroids around here be great so hopefully there's no habitable planets around here because I stopped exploring in that direction maybe I should I'm actually gonna send my survey ship just to make sure just in case there's amazing planets on the south side of uh, on the southern quadrant of Cleef though I highly doubt it I would have to be extremely lucky let's end turn My population approval is not too high right now. I try to get as much population off the planet as possible because approval comes a lot from um, the population on the planet. And I try to depopulate it really fast with my colony ship so that it would have higher approval and therefore higher bonuses. But sadly, I've not been able to... Oh, darn it! So Conrad 2, although it's class 9 and I would have colonized it, ex requires extreme colonization. So this is really bad because the 3 population on my ship here that I depopulated my homeworld for have been completely wasted for a few turns now. Has not been able to do anything. Let's keep any turn. Uh, more more durantium. That's not so useful right now. No, there are no there are no habitable planets unless right here. <laughs> Probably not. Statistically, very unlikely. So let's let's get my colony ship. No planets in Hagen either in the Hagen system. Really crappy. Really crappy right now. This is not the easiest of starts, which is once again why it's max difficulty gaming. So, <laughs> Conrad 3 is also a class 7 planet. I'm not having the best of luck right now. Um, there's a good chance I might just populate Conrad 7 because, honestly, the more turns I waste the 3 population on this colony ship, the worse, the harder my game is going to be later on. Class 6, Hagen 1 is class 6. These are some really crappy planets around me. Um, Yeah, I think I might just... Okay, no. One more star system. Gamble. I'm a gambler. Gamble on whatever star system this is. Please. Please. Fingers crossed. 
and it looks like Regis Philia also does not have habitable planets. Regis Philia 1 is dead. Dead planets everywhere. Dead planets galore. Claythona does, does not look like it has a planet, but hopefully... Oh, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Justin Moore might. Really want to colonize the planet right now. As soon as my default colony ship gets to and more one darned darn tough start I want to save my money to um, boost production on M1 one as fast as possible because it's plus 25 base total manufacturing so I'm gonna buy a factory on it to start so I'm gonna save them some money for now Galaxians Gala Gal Galaxianus is dead it's another dead planet Dead planets galore. Very, very, very sad. Okay, so this is class 11. Finally, a class 11 planet. But sadly, I don't think my, yeah, my, <laughs> my colony ship cannot reach it, sadly. But, uh, so right now I have an idle colony. I am going to right now build a consulate explain my influence so I can reach further planets so I won't have this problem in the future I'm actually gonna go uh, I think I'm actually gonna go full research because Xenon industrialization as soon as I finish that I can upgrade all these uh, research laboratories and basic factories into their next tier doesn't look like there are any planets and uh, just a minpore, whatever it's called. Nope. Too bad, so sad. And uh... I am out of moves. They're out of moves. Come on, next turn. My influence is expanding very slowly. Hey, maybe... Next turn. One more turn. One more turn, then now I can populate Anwar. So close. But my colony ship looks really cool. Look at this. Yes! Wonderful. So I'm done researching you know, industrialization, perfect, and I want to research planetary improvement next so I can build farms. Um, so right now, I'm actually going to change most of the production back to manufacturing so I can finish researching all these. I'm actually going to move the Xeno laboratories down and boost the Xeno factories because those will make Xeno laboratories faster, build faster. Oh, there's an anomaly here inside the nebula. Okay. Kingor does not have any habitable planets. So let's colonize Amwar 1. <laughs> Turn 14. One of the slowest starts I've had. Oh, it is actually still stopped because it stopped in the asteroid belt. Darn. <laughs> Forgot about that. Oh, whoops. It seems my ship has automatically found a planet class 10 bountiful plus 50 percent gross income that is that is a lucky that is a stroke of luck yes i want to colonize this planet my god elena one uh, elena three yes first colony i finally after their long journey your colonists set foot on an alien world untold effort and struggle were required to get even this far but it is only the beginning the galaxy is filled with worlds so every time you colonize a planet, you get a colonizing event where you get um, ideology points and other bonuses associated. So in, on the, in the case of this planet, there are specific species of fish which seem to possess a form of collective intelligence. The ships seem to become more intelligent the larger group they are in, and in the largest schools they can clearly communicate with us. That's very cool, hive minds even seem to understand advanced concepts like space travel and where we're from. The fish also have several concerns about the way our colony is being built. So right now if we become merciless, if we go uh, malevolent, 
uh, ideology, we get defensive bonuses, which isn't really useful. Um, this is going to be economic planet because it has that great bonus 50% economic. Um, I'm most likely going to do everything we can do to accommodate the fish, but we get negative 10 manufacturing. So they're basically, if we choose pragmatic, I obviously don't want the defensive bonus. That's unneeded. Um, we're basically going to get plus 10 research if we go pragmatic. Or if we go benevolent, then we get plus 20 research, but we get many negative 10 manufacturing. So do we want to trade 10 for 10 manufacturing for 10 research? And my answer is no, I'm going to choose pragmatic. So we're going to continue to seek guidance and console of the fish, though let's not forget our place here. We're the ones that actually do the space travel. Very, very pragmatic of us. Oh, so there's a nice trade resource, plus 5% ship range, that's that's very useful. Plus 2 wealth on a planet that's bountiful that gives plus 50% net income. That is perfect, so that, that's, that's going to be great. I'm going to actually buy a factory right now, build another factory. This gives plus 2 to adjacency to um, military, don't need that. I'm actually going to make a lot of this into economics. I'm going to make this into a research. And there we go. We're actually going to actually going to change everything to manufacturing for now because we want to finish these buildings as soon as possible. So now that we've colonized the planet. Oh. Elena, wow. Wow. That's insane. Oh wow, the Elena system is has seven, has, whoa, wait, seven planets around it, and three of them are class 10 or above. I totally didn't even realize this before I colonized this planet. That's insane. So that's actually, that's actually really cool. Okay, so plus 50% morale income, plus 25% research defense, plus 50% income. Um, this is actually a really good place to make a manufacturing hub with a shipyard. So I'm actually going to build a lot of factories on these planets too, just to um, get that shipyard production up. Maybe. In the meantime, I am going to change everything to manufacturing and make everything shipyard production. Send everything to the shipyard. So this way... My shipyard gets all the manufacturing, so I'm going to build as many um, colonial, colonial ships as possible. Each of them are going to take two turns, that's perfectly fine, I'm totally fine with that. Sadly, I cannot buy a colonial ship because I don't have a thousand gold anymore. It's too bad, but <laughs> since um, my, shi my ship didn't have enough sensor range, I didn't see both these planets, so I want to populate these ASAP. So I'm going to research ideology first, and I know exactly what I'm gonna go for, I think. I'm gonna go for... I am going to go for, so as you can see, you get points for benevolent, pragmatic, malevolent points depending on what you choose on your colony events and also on galactic wide events, which we have not seen yet. Um, if I had chosen benevolent, I could have actually gotten a fully loaded colony ship for the outreach branch. But right now, I think I'm going to... Three constructor points, constructor modules. I think I'm gonna get free, three free constructor ships as a builder because that actually helps a lot because I can research the manufacturing relic and the research relic on this turn right now. Okay, I'm gonna get that constructive, perfect. Um, send it here, send the other one up here, and Maybe someone to mind the asteroids. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna cut part one of my Aconian godlike let's play short here. And this is this was Galactic Civilizations 3, um, Beta 5 Custom Factions. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And leave suggestions in the comment section below. Once again, this is one of my first let's plays, so constructive criticism is always appreciated. And what a stroke of luck to end this video on. A system, a purp, giant purple star system with seven planets and three class tens. That's, that's amazing. That's worth the 14 turn wait to find a colonizable planet. If only I had 
explore this way to start with. Oh well. So I will see you guys next time.